David, over to you. Okay, good morning. So my name is uh, David Rossi. I'm from uh, University of uh, Bologna, uh, but I'm going to present uh, a project with, uh, which is in collaboration with uh, ETH uh, Zurich. Uh, so uh, what we've done in the last uh, six, uh, six months uh, is uh, an improvement of the microarchitecture of the, of the big, uh, core. But uh, I'm here uh, mostly to introduce uh, myself and uh, uh, our group and to establish a connection with the Operative community and uh, maybe collaboration with anybody. Else. So uh, our group uh, is led by Professor uh, Luca Benini, uh, which uh, now is 50% uh, uh, in Bologna and 50% uh, ETH uh, Zurich. So uh, there is a strict uh, collaboration between those uh, two groups. Actually, actually, we are uh, just uh, one uh, distributed group. Uh, the background of uh, IAS Digital Lab uh, of ETH Zurich is uh, mainly on VLSI. Uh, system uh, circuits design and test uh, they've made in uh, last uh, 10 or 20 years more than 300 chips uh, and uh, uh, all the chips were tested and verified with the tester. While uh, uh, from a University of Bologna viewpoint uh, the background uh, is mainly at uh, system level. Uh, we have experience with uh, multi many core architecture. Uh, programming uh, of uh, this kind of uh, architecture, so uh, parallel programming models mainly based uh, on extensions of uh, open and uh, Runtime uh, management, for example, uh, variability aware uh, runtime management, uh, uh, thermal aware uh, runtime management, uh, and also allocation policies uh, of uh, threads in multiple systems, uh, virtualization of uh, accelerators. Uh, when you have uh, one uh, host processor and, uh, for example, uh, a general part for many core processors, this can be a GPU, uh, we are studying uh, how to uh, handle virtualization of uh, this accelerator and with the scheduling uh, of uh, threads uh, on a portion of the accelerator. Uh, and uh, also virtual uh, platforms. Uh, so the virtual platform we have, we have used for uh, uh, test uh, all the programming runtime uh, accelerator with this application. And uh, there is uh, one uh, virtual platform, uh, BSOC, which is uh, open source and uh, available on uh, our web website. Yeah, uh, I did not really understood what you mean by accelerators, virtualization. For yeah. me, virtualization so, is decoupling the soft and the hard. But, uh, uh, yes. So there are uh, mainly uh, two problems with uh, this kind of accelerator. Uh, the first problem is that uh, when uh, you launch uh, a parallel kernel, so you have an hoster that can be a generic CPU and uh, a parallel uh, architecture that can be a GPU, for example. And uh, when you launch a kernel from uh, the CPU, uh, there is no way, especially in embedded, uh, embedded environment, to, uh, to uh, serialize thread to uh, handle quality of service of uh, parallel thread runs on uh, the accelerator. And uh, another problem is related to the uh, virtual memory. Usually the host supports, uh, is supporting virtual memory, while, while the accelerator is not supporting virtual memory. For this reason, every time uh, you launch uh, a kernel on uh, this kind of accelerator, you need to make a copy. You to make it in CUDA, programming language, to copy or OpenCL. And uh, this is uh, not very good for performance. So we are uh, studying ways of uh, avoiding uh, this unnecessary copy from the same memory, different memory spaces of uh, the same memory. One uh, is virtualized and one continuous. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, our work uh, is uh, mainly focused on uh, the PARP project. PARP uh, is intended to be a parallel process in the ultra low power uh, platform. And our challenge is uh, to, extreme, uh, to achieve uh, an, an extreme energy efficiency using a tightly coupled cluster of simple uh, processors operating in uh, near threshold. So uh, why we want to use a uh, tightly coupled cluster? What, what we mean? We mean uh, a 
set of uh, processing cores connected through a set of uh, multi-banked uh, memory, memory connected to a single latency interconnector. It's something like uh, uh, what happens within uh, the multiprocessor of uh, GPU, that we have uh, a single latency accesses from the processing element to the memory. And each core can access it can access each uh, bank, and uh, if uh, there are a conflict uh, between uh, the memory accesses, uh, one core is told. Otherwise, uh, each core can uh, access uh, its uh, memory bank independently in, uh, within one clock cycle. And uh, this uh, enables uh, a style of computation that uh, we, with respect to, uh, to other approaches enable a fine grain uh, to achieve a fine grain granularity of uh, parallelism, not only thread level parallelism, also data level. Okay, basically, we want to uh, work in near, near, near thread because uh, when uh, uh, we have uh, high operating voltages, we have the problem of uh, dynamic power, which increases a lot. On the other hand, when we have uh, in uh, the third threshold, uh, we have uh, that uh, the leakage energy becomes uh, really relevant, and uh, the timing, the, the frequency, operating frequency became very slow. Those are those are that is uh, to uh, work in uh, this region that uh, has been uh, identified as the optimal energy point uh, uh, region, and uh, this region is uh, more or less. Uh, when uh, it's achieved when the dynamic power is uh, almost comparable, almost of the same order of magnitude of the weakest power. Uh, then we are uh, making technology aware uh, design to achieve the energy efficiency on a wider range of operating ranges, so not only in uh, this range. And, uh, we need to apply uh, reverse body biasing and the forward body biasing depending uh, on the operating condition and the, the workload that we want to achieve. So, uh, body biasing is, is a technique uh, which allows to dynamically modify the threshold voltage of transistors. So, when uh, we want to go faster and uh, we can consume more energy, we can reduce the threshold voltage of transistors dynamically, while uh, when uh, we need uh, uh, to uh, reduce power consumption because, for example, we are not using some blocks, we can uh, uh, apply reverse body biasing and increase the threshold voltage of transistor to reduce leakage power. Okay, we are uh, planning a peak out for uh, November uh, 18, uh, so in uh, two months. But probably the tape out will be, will be delayed, delayed uh, because of uh, boundary problems. And the technology will be done in uh, FTSY 28 technology mode. But uh, for our purpose, an uh, efficient digital processor implementation is, uh, is very important because uh, if we want to achieve uh, energy efficiency, we, we need to have a really high IPC okay, because uh, every time we are, uh, we are wasting an instruction, we are wasting energy and power. So our approach, uh, as I told, uh, is uh, based on a multi-cluster, uh, tightly coupled uh, memory uh, architecture. TCDM uh, interconnect, uh, is the one features an interleaved scheme to minimize the contention. So this one is access, uh, access, uh, accessed at the other zero, zero at this one, and so on. And uh, this enables the exploitation of high grain uh, granularity of uh, parallelism. And uh, we have also a DMA. Uh, uh, to perform data transfer. So this is not uh, a cache, it's a scratch by the memory, multi-banked scratch by the memory. So uh, we plan to put uh, some shared uh, functional unit to uh, improve uh, the performance and the energy efficiency of applications that can be easily accelerated. And uh, okay, as I told you, we, we plan to exploit the SOI properties by applying uh, fine grain granularity of uh, body bias and reason in order to speed up or uh, 
or reduce the leakage power of uh, each block uh, in the cluster. Of course, uh, this uh, cluster is uh, the basic block of the platform. Uh, this can be replicated and connected to a with a network of the chip uh, for uh, in the chip. In the other chip, there will be two clusters. So ba basically, uh, with uh, the operating uh, processor, we've done a preliminary critical path analysis uh, due to our uh, structure of uh, the structure of uh, our cluster, which is not the standard uh, cluster uh, of risk architecture. And uh, we have done the, the series with uh, the core only, uh, with uh, no memories, only the core. Uh, with a single core, okay, so, uh, and uh, we used the QMEM, not uh, the data cache. So our architecture has the instruction, instruction cache and the QMEM. And the uh, multi-core optimization which uh, introduced the uh, logarithmic uh, interconnect, the interconnect between the memories and the uh, processor. And uh, we've seen that uh, we have uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, delay that we can uh, exploit to uh, improve the IPC at the cost of uh, what we fact frequency that in any case we have because of our architecture. Okay, the critical path is uh, on the multiplier with uh, the processor all implementation on the, from the command to the register file with the command implementation and uh, uh, from the TCDM to the register file with the multi uh, TCDM. So we verified uh, the uh, of the risk, first of all. We have done some, uh, some analysis on a simple, uh, very simple benchmarks in every field, actually. But uh, we have measured the IPC and uh, it was uh, uh, quite uh, slow. So we tried to uh, get deeper in uh, the architecture, uh, making a synthetic benchmark to uh, verify uh, different class of instruction. We have seen that uh, there were a lot of problems with the low store operation, multiplication, and uh, uh, loops. So, uh, this analysis highlighted uh, some uh, microarchitectural weakness in the low store unit multiplier and the branch of execution. So, starting from the low store unit, uh, we have seen that uh, it's a low store operation for the uh, QMEM or TCDM, actually uh, taking uh, two cycles uh, for to be accomplished. So uh, this was not a very good problem because uh, we wanted a single cycle access for the TCDM. So basically, uh, we modified uh, the architecture. And also the multiplication, uh, there are three stores after its multiplication instruction. And, uh, uh, well, uh, with the branches, we have seen that uh, there is uh, one uh, branch that is uh, which is filled by the compiler, which put an off uh, if uh, uh, there is a uh, conditional branch and puts an instruction if uh, the branch is not conditional. While and an, an additional uh, uh, stall uh, introduced by the pipeline. And uh, we also had a problem uh, with uh, instruction cache refill, which is uh, really related to our specific uh, architecture. So, for what concerns the uh, store, we uh, had a problem was related with uh, arrest uh, on the LS LSU uh, stages that uh, avoided uh, the response signal from the, C the CDM to be forwarded to the pipeline in one cycle. So we removed the register and we changed the, the, the uh, control uh, unit in order to have a single cycle response to the pipe risk pipeline. And uh, okay, we modified the pipeline in order to have some forwarding path and we also added a, a port to the register file. And uh, the impact on critical path uh, was uh, almost uh, invisible. if implemented on uh, silicon. Okay, here we have seen uh, a problem that uh, was related with this. 
uh, there was a signal, the stall signal coming from the instruction that, uh, that was generated uh, during the cash uh, mission was uh, propagated to the tetric couple of the So in the original version of the OpenDisk, this was not a problem because there was the register that blocked the signal. But here we had uh, a long critical path going from the uh, IC tag and the TCDM. And so in order to break uh, this path, we uh, modified uh, the, the control of uh, the, this load store in order to, uh, to end, uh, in any case, the load store, the pending load store instruction, even if uh, there is a tag uh, miss. And uh, if necessary, uh, stall uh, for one cycle. Uh, okay, we have to modify something in the control unit. So we break on this path uh, in order to avoid uh, the critical path. Basically, we had the same problem with the multi multiplier because the multiplier was uh, blocking. So uh, every time uh, that uh, a multiplication was issued, uh, all the pipeline was called for uh, say sample. And uh, we modified the control unit uh, in order to uh, to check uh, data dependencies between uh, multi multiplication instructions and the following instruction. And uh, yes, and uh, so now the processor only stores if uh, there is a data dependency between the multiplication instruction and the following instruction. Okay, finally the problem with the instruction cache uh, refill is really related to our architecture. The problem was that our bus is 64-bit uh, uh, wide, while uh, the uh, instruction cache refill path is only 32-bit, so we doubled uh, the uh, data cache. And uh, now the refill, instead of uh, taking for, so in case of uh, four words refill, cache line of uh, four words, instead of uh, four cycles plus latency, it only takes two cycles plus the latency of the interconnect. Okay, finally, uh, the most tricky problem <laughs> was with the branch execution. So uh, we take uh, this problem that has been highlighted also by you in your previous presentation, but uh, we we would be thought a bit how to solve this problem and uh, we thought about uh, putting a branch prediction table but fourth we check if uh, with uh, the margin that we had in timing we could directly forward from the value the signals to the uh, problem counter generation and uh, what uh, we have seen is that uh, uh, yes we could uh, do it but uh, uh, we have to solve uh, one problem that is related to the forwarding unit from the uh, load store unit to the uh, yeah, to the flag register. So uh, this path uh, was critical. So we had uh, to to break uh, this path, and uh, for this reason we uh, we modify the control unit in order to. Uh, stall the processor, so we we, we broke into the uh, combination path by putting a uh, register. So uh, the forwarding uh, from the uh, load store unit to the IPC reg is not uh, anymore there, and uh, we stalled uh, the pipeline in case of uh, a load unit after a branch. is explained here. Basically, the critical path was somewhere there. Okay, we have uh, evaluated uh, our uh, modifications uh, on the uh, on the few benchmarks that we have uh, analyzed. And uh, for what concerns the uh, instruction cache uh, refill, uh, we have analyzed uh, our results with uh, all the caches, so empty caches. And uh, okay. 
uh, the improvement uh, is uh, quite relevant, but uh, of course this was not the major problem of our architecture because uh, usually so it is uh, assumed that cash uh, are cold uh, and uh, the miss rate is not uh, very high. On the other hand, we have also uh, verified uh, our function with uh, load store and multiplier uh, fix, and uh, we really achieved uh, greater performance. Uh, for example, uh, for the matrix pool, we have a 33% benefit, matrix add a 15% benefit, and the benefit also for double sort and uh, configure of the Fibonacci series, which are not uh, multiplication intensive. But, uh, we got a uh, good reload, especially with the uh, ticks of the load store uh, problem. Do you have those tests like available somewhere that other people could try? I would be interested to run yeah, the yeah. same kind of I can, tests. I can, uh, I can provide you the test. It's cool. very, very similar. It's a very simple test. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Are they all single threaded tests? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, the analysis make uh, only yeah. on a single uh, processor. Mm -hmm. This is all measured in simulation. Yeah, uh, RTL simulation. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no, you haven't got some sort of infrastructure on the board or instrumentation to allow you to calculate instructions per second. Oh, sorry, instructions per cycle. No, no. At, at, uh, so we we modified the, the monitor to to catch uh, the number of the instructions. And uh, so, and uh, with the, the branch uh, fix, we got uh, even better uh, results uh, as uh, we achieved also almost uh, optimal IP scale for uh, all the application we analyzed. Uh, we have seen uh, one problem with the uh, multiplier. Uh, so it seems that uh, the compiler uh, is uh, not able to reserve the correct number of slots uh, after the compiler. And uh, even uh, if uh, it is possible to, to fill the slot with uh, an instruction with no data dependency, uh, the compiler only inserts uh, two instructions instead of three. Did, did you modify the compiler? No. Because <laughs> you could probably modify it to make it do that, right? Well. You first have to describe the actual uh, a pipeline properly. If you don't do that, you can't expect any sense for scheduling. Is it not? So actually, I, I, I take a look inside the uh, pipeline description file within the compiler, but uh, I'm not an expert, so. I, I think it's not accurate at all that the you know, uh, 1200 or whatever pipeline is in there. But I would have thought it's pretty easy. Sorry, it's a bit of a side question. But the problem is that we can kind of can have different, so if you do one optimization that works well for kind of one implementation, it doesn't necessarily work well for another, because that was another thing with the, with the conditional branches, you could easily solve that problem by also reorganizing the set flag instruction and the branch instruction. If you, if you can insert in, uh, some some instructions in between the set flag and the branch, then you could avoid the whole problem with the branch prediction that I did, because then you kind of have the extra slot in between there. But that would be so specific to to like the implementations, that's why I didn't go that far. But don't Intel do that? Isn't there like a million dash M or dash F flags for like Intel's GCC? Yeah, yeah, but there was one that. Well, why not? I mean, if, it, if it's easy to do and it doesn't hurt anyone else, or relatively easy to do, and then you get a performance increase when you add that to your make file for that particular machine. Well, then I wouldn't have to do the branch for you. I'm just surprised that uh, removing the delays what is supposed to bring such benefit. Uh, oh, maybe it doesn't, yeah. But, um, but th in this case, you could, yeah. I, I assumed it was pretty easy in GCC to tell it when I'm doing a multiplier. So actually, Don't. we are we are also exploring, so we, we believe that uh, three pipeline stages uh, are not necessary for, for the multiplier. So we, are, we will explore also, the <laughs> reduce the depth of the, so everything will be fine. Sounds like the delay slot scheduling is getting better. Probably balance for the general scheduling. If you 
get that extreme results there. And you're not talking about delay slot, are you? Sorry? You're not talking about removing the delay slot in any No, case. he's speaking about uh, or what I understood is uh, like scheduling instructions between a multiply. Yes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, but one of the changes he, he outlined was that um, the instruction after a branch is always executed that promotes the delay slot. If you remove that, you no longer have the delay slot. So, for what you could see, uh, there is uh, one uh, instruction with what is put by the compiler. And uh, it can be either an auto or a, a real instruction, depending on the conditional or, or not conditional branches. And you have uh, one additional store in the original version of the, of the upper risk. And then we, we removed uh, the addiction of the store by forwarding it from the execution into some flags. Or yeah, that's, that's not removing the delay slot, that's just an implementation. So, yeah. like having two delay slots, but only a good Wow. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, I, I think that uh, this solution could be could uh, reduce uh, the, the frequency in your implementation of the processor, because uh, in FPGA it might be more treating routing in the processor or something. Or the multiplier. You're no, no, no. I'm talking about uh, uh, the forwarding uh, for the branch. Ah, okay. That's uh, why. I think branch, uh, branch prediction could be a better solution for, uh, for, a, <laughs> for, a, for a processor not optimized for, for this uh, application. So what's the cost and area and power of having three uh, write ports to register for a... Sorry? So what's the cost and area and power of having three write ports to register for a... Uh, very small. Uh, I, didn't put, I didn't have the number here. But uh, not so big. It's just uh, addition, some uh, some additional MOOCs uh, on the input part on the of the SD file. Are you using a uh, like memory macro for the register file, or just no, no, no? I'm using the flat flip flop for the register file. Cool. The separate write parts for uh, load and for the ALU would be uh, interesting if you could get any kind of um, super scalarity or maybe some uh, uh, auto increment addressing modes which effectively increase the IPC beyond one. So you mean uh, something like make a dual issue? A dual issue of instructions that do two things at once? You can finish two instructions at once oh. and write back to it at once. It's, it's like the multiply and a load or another instruction mm -hmm. finished at the same time you can update your register file in the same way. I noticed but that this is happening because we added a, a port, two, yeah. two ports for the register file for this reason. Yeah. Because uh, if we're back, it could happen on the same cycle and we don't want to store it for this reason. Mm, maybe it affects the critical path. But that's one thing I've been thinking about for the MR1KX is allowing, we're doing a, a pipeline where you don't have a memory-based register file, but instead do it all in flops, and then uh, yeah, allow updating of whichever register you want. It may explode combinatorially because of all the muxing and all the options, but um, yeah, it may allow you to do finish a, a lot more instructions at once. Or obviously, you could just allow one uh, load store operation and one register update too. Yeah. Have at the same time, you can only save something you set up as memory. Yeah. Okay, if you just keep two drug ports in your memory, you will map better to FPGA resources. So the synthesis tool detects that and it maps to the vendor specific blocks. Sure. And then you get the timing. Yeah. But then there's well for ASIC synthesis. Oh, yeah. Okay. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. But usually, Okay, go on. Okay. Okay, then... Uh, you talked about the problem with the component? Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I already talked. Uh, so we've done uh, okay, some kind of uh, very rough comparison against a commercial processor. So, uh, with the IPC, we are uh, very good now. And uh, there is uh, actually no problem. 
But uh, what is the STX? Uh, XP7 is a uh, processor from ST Microelectronics. But uh, what what is the actual processor? Though? So it is a uh, uh, okay processor for uh, embedded uh, applications. Is it a RISC? It's a type processor. Thing? Yeah. Okay. But it is it is a dual issue processor. Oh. Uh, it's it is, it is uh, almost twice the area of, of the RISC and. Uh, so, uh, as we can see from uh, the results, uh, uh, so the modified version of the of the risk uh, is uh, positioned in quite a good way with respect uh, to Cortex uh, M4. But uh, here we are analyzing uh, only the the number of cycles, not the frequency, because we don't know the frequency of the Cortex M3 in our technology. And uh, while uh, so the results show that uh, much can be done uh, because uh, so X XP70 perform uh, slightly better even with a uh, uh, single issue uh, configuration. And uh, uh, here I forgot to put uh, to end the sentence. XP70 can perform four times better with uh, hardware loop enabled. Uh, and uh, this uh, is a future direction in uh, which we would like to go. Well, why, is, why is the M4 so much better in the Sudoku solver? Sudoku solver. M4 keeps everything else about. It's not better. This is number of cycles. Oh, oh sorry. 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 <laughs> Oops. Ah, yeah. And I was wondering why dual <laughs> issue was worse than single issue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I get it. Okay, and uh, okay, uh, we have done uh, about a rough estimation of uh, the benefit of uh, hardware loops on a few applications, and uh, you can have uh, uh, so 34 percent less uh, instruction e executed from our uh, rough analytical <laughs> estimation, and uh, I think that uh, especially for ultra low power processor uh, hardware loop, so and. Uh, for processor executing uh, signal processing application, it's a very iterative and can uh, provide a really lot of benefits. What are you defining as a hardware loop? Right, so the so instructions are kept in flops. Yes, in, instead of uh, having uh, all the instruction to perform uh, branch during uh, loops, for loops, yeah. uh, you put a flag on uh, your code and uh, the compiler translates the flag into specific instruction that the program a finite state machine yep. in, in, somewhere within the uh, pipeline of the processor and it perform the loops automatically. Okay. Increment the address and the check the flag automatically. It's so special that you can't even write it in C. And you say you need a special flag in the code. Uh, it, it can also be detected automatically by the compiler. But, but the tables are also really decent how you make the hardware so that the compiler can actually use it, right? So, uh, this is implemented in the X70, so it is possible to do it. You have the instruction or just the looping instruction in the instruction screen? Sorry? Where is the instruction to make it a hardware loop? Is it it's a start of the loop or the end of the loop? Uh, it is the start of the loop. Usually, you put a uh, pragma, in well, I mean the hardware. <laughs> oh. well, you set the addresses normally, right? So when, when you enter, you set the addresses of which part should be yeah. loop and the, how often, how many, or, times, yeah. Yeah, how many times. That's how many. Yeah. And this can definitely be uh, like inferred from the code. If it's a simple for loop, right, you can extract that information. But GCC is not very happy when it uh, uh, generates these kinds of loops and then it sings twice about the loop structure and in the end it doesn't fit anywhere. And it's probably why it's not very good at using it then. I don't know what compilers are using. Really. Yeah, one of well, one that the is only the black um, processors. Map and arc who have a, a loop begin instruction. All the other processors either don't have a zero over loop or they have a low over loop instruction which is at the end. So it's just a Kind of I was just confirming that's what you meant. 
is in our product. So, uh, in any case, uh, this is implemented on uh, the ARC processor, for example, on the XP70 processor, and uh, both compilers are based on uh, GCC. So, this can be done. I don't know how, how difficult it is, but uh, it can be done. When you remember the 6804 term, it had a very more compiler friendly way of doing zero overhead loops. It was just a decrement and branch instruction. And when the hardware saw this instruction, they just made it a zero head overhead loop according to the current state of the process. And it's also completely transparent to interrupts because you can just forget your zero overhead loop context. And then when you come back from the interrupt, you see the instruction again and set it up again. Whereas when you have specialized registers for this, there's more context to save in interrupts. And you want to save the context of the hardware loop, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that also could give you performance improvements in specific uh, single thread benchmark that cost you performance in multi thread benchmarks. Yes, of course we. <laughs> we have to expand this at the second time. But so, for example, uh, we, we don't have uh, improvement uh, in a few months because uh, it's a uh, highly precocious. So there, is, there are no loops. So, but for some applications, it can be. Any idea any branches inside the zero overhead loops? No. So, like, branch out of the loop? It's a, it's a very specific. Uh, so maybe so the GCC edit there's less stuff to get confused about, but it it, it, it does limit the scope of the optimization. So we can discuss about this. Uh, I'm uh, not an expert of compilers, <laughs> so. In the end, you have to see what you have to gain in performance with a real system compiled code because it would be very hard pressed to find uh, thousands of people wanting to work similar uh, optimized code for your target. Sorry. Um, the uh, benefit of any hardware improvement uh, has for uh, Systems of reasonable size always be seen in conjunction with how it works with the compiler. Yeah, yeah sure. Like he said, this definitely exists and this is used quite often. Mm -hmm. For really short kernels, you have <coughs> really just some arithmetic. Of course, if you have complex logic and want to branch, then this doesn't apply, like you said, but if you have very simple arithmetic, this is a huge yeah, improvement. But for simple stuff, it, it can. And it can be informed from C code, it's not necessary to write in an assembler. I think uh, perhaps this discussion is yeah. a useful one to carry on over lunch. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, okay, another idea we have uh, is to add a uh, uh, custom uh, instruction set uh, extension on the other risk. This uh, is already done in, in uh, some processors, such as the CDP extension or uh, XP70 also. And uh, so we are planning to do something uh, similar on the local risk. So to export an interface from the pipeline would be easy. Uh, there's, already, there's already a template in the OR1200 to do that for the L.cust5 instruction. For the? The custom instructions in the open risk instruction okay, set. Okay, but uh, there is a custom instruction in the instruction set, but, but there is not the interface to, to plug it. Oh, not, not externally, but in the ALU there's a little bit of code where it currently decodes okay. you know, a mock-up of a you know, bit field encodings in the L.cust5 instruction, but it would be dead easy to extend that to support, yeah. and the assembler will support it already. Really, so. so I think that uh, the real challenge here is uh, we need to uh, implement a uh, methodology to, uh, to implement uh, Application specific accelerator, maybe starting from uh, high level uh, description, high level language, some kind of uh, high level uh, synthesis uh, tool.
Okay, and uh, another problem that uh, has been already highlighted is that of code density, but uh, we are going to talk about it uh, in the next session, so why not? Okay, uh, our uh, future work in the, in the long term are uh, extensive verification of the uh, of a risk uh, modified version. So we have uh, a tape out uh, in uh, November, but probably it will be, de it will be delayed by a couple of months. And uh, then for the next year, uh, there are a lot of uh, students uh, that are going to make a, a semester thesis and uh, uh, we are probably going to modify from start, start uh, the writing of uh, the processor from, from uh, scratch with uh, uh, as if optimized version of the, of the risk. Okay, and also you know, extending uh, the core with uh, uh, application domain uh, specific functional unit uh, and you would like to put uh, this uh, functional unit uh, as uh, shared among uh, the, the cores uh, of the cluster. Okay, of course we start uh, from the FTU because it's already there. So it's easy. Uh, can you say more about the type out who where are you who's fabbing it? ST maker the trunk. ST what node? Sorry? Uh, uh, for twenty A uh, sorry, Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, cool. Who, who's paying for the people? So, we have a collaboration uh, with uh, ST. And, uh, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, they're they doing it like for almost free? Yeah, so ba basically, the problem with uh, DSOI is that uh, uh, there isn't a, a big community of uh, companies using the FTSI, so ST is signing uh, contracts with the university to disseminate uh, this kind of technology, right. make chips and publications, and so on. <laughs> and uh, we are uh, on this so you, you environment. Work, you work with several advertisement for the technology. <laughs> <laughs> that's <is> great. <laughs> yeah. Pro Professor Benini, right, he worked on P2012, like there, yeah. the big project. So he's part of ST, not really. Yeah. yeah. That's constructive uh, advertising. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 what was the negative for me to say that? No, it's, yeah, yeah, no. it's probably early yeah. days, but could you comment on the availability, availability of these chips to the wider community? I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe send us a few. Yeah. Usually, uh, for the is not good to <laughs> to, to give uh, chips to, to the community. For example. Uh, uh, I was in a, a European project with ST, and uh, there was a uh, small uh, company who wanted to make demos with the uh, test chip made in the framework of uh, an European project, and it wasn't possible because of the agreement. Uh, no, that's too bad. Because it, it is not a product. <laughs> so if uh, I do something something wrong, wrong with this chip, ST doesn't want to be responsible for that. Lawyers. Brand them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. HTI on the top or something. <laughs> Do you have to get on any proprietary stuff now on ST? Like with the XP70, right? That was a big issue. Yeah, yeah, we are not using uh, anything. Okay, but that might make this situation better, I guess. Can I ask a question about your 10 by 10 at the start? 10 by 10? Yeah. 10, 10 cores, 10 mega hops. Ah, so ah, optimal yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and so what you're saying is you've got um, a crossbar connection between the CPU yeah. and the uh, first level cache. Yeah. So yeah, it's not a cache, it's a crossbar memory. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a first level memory. Let, let, let's ignore whether it's a first level memory or a cache. Well, I mean, that's another subject. But, but what? What, what, by doing that, you don't need any cache consistency logic. Yeah. Because everything's stored in just one place. Yeah. Um, so the uh, the question is, uh, how how big does it, can you scale the uh, crossbar before you'd be better off with um, up to sixteen uh, processor and thirty two memory? Well, but then 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 your um, performance of the crossbar would be a sufficient penalty that you'd be better off with dedicated memories and then if you still like cache consistency have, uh, to have cache consistency.
if they're not caches, then you've got no way to create the DRAM. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, the this is the scalability of uh, the uh, logarithm in internet. We are using uh, uh, we are using uh, to connect the memories with the processor. So uh, we have uh, done uh, the regression. And uh, these are the right. the results. So this is from a paper? Uh, yeah, might be, I can give you the pointer. Yes, please. Okay, I had some conclusion that... Uh, your, your idea is to verify the simulation? What? I do. Oh, no, it's just a very interesting. I, one of my fixations is how much electricity is wasted by cache consistency traffic. And the compiler mostly knows what's going on. I don't think it's cross bars is very much better here. Interest. Huh? I don't think a big cross bar is kind well, of Well, exactly, better. that's the question, yeah. Where are in, in our system, we used that there was only like 5%, something like that, that were used by the cross bars. 5% of the overall area? No, uh, for energy. Energy. Energy of the whole cluster? No, no, not the cluster, just the one processor with the cross bar. Ah, OK. Yeah. What? Processor was a crossbar to how many? And not one processor, I mean one tile basically, so eight processors, in this case it's 16 bytes. So one multi core processor. Okay. Uh, yes, so the area of is uh, more or less 5%. Uh, so we are not evaluated the, the, the energy yet because uh, we are performing the annotated simulation post pressure route right now to have a uh, a good estimation of, of power. So uh, basically, uh, okay, we are able going to share uh, uh, the modified version of the processor and also to, to contribute uh, together with you to the improvement of uh, this processor or other processors. If we want to join everything uh, and so on. Uh, okay. You don't have an issue to the fact that uh, SP is in the project? So ST is making the uh, same okay. okay, but they are not funding no. the research and so on. No. Okay. And uh, okay, the, the main problem we, we have now is uh, with the compiler. Uh, if you want to modify something, uh, okay. one problem is the compiler and uh, also with the simulator. Now we have a simulator which is based on a ARM of five uh, instruction set architecture and uh, we will need to port uh, the risk uh, to the simulator. That's why I asked you the simulator. We had uh, open source uh, cores, uh, extendable instructions that certainly have a lot of potential. But besides license compatibility, we would also have to conserve patent compatibility as a boundary. Guys, guys. Uh, sorry? And when you have um, an open source core with uh, extendable instructions that certainly has a lot of potential yeah. but also besides the license compatibility of, of the core IP you have now to consider the patent compatibility with the location of the foundry because what is legal to sing in, in one country might be uh, patented in another country mm. yes so, yeah, I mean, there are patent issues around defensible instruction sets. Um, yeah. so what's now synopsis would be uh, for a start. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Questions? I think we've got time for a few questions on this, and then we're going to... Okay, and we'll probably have to carry on over lunch. Um, the, I have to some comments. First of all, on the compiler development, um, as you will see from the discussion, Jörn's a good person to talk to, A, because he did the commercial development of, open, of the GCC 4.5, but also because he's the maintainer of the ARC compiler. Okay. So <laughs> if anyone knows about zero overhead loops and extensible instructions, it's Jörn. So I would suggest you talk to Jörn on that one. Um, secondly, to comment that there is a big UK initiative on low power computing. Um, so David has a joint project funded by that. I have a joint project with Bristol University by that, and there is the Energy Aware Computing Initiative, which is hosted by Bristol University, which is Europe-wide, and which we really encourage you to join there, okay. um, which is a, a way of bringing all the research groups in Europe together okay. on this field. And lastly, for those of you who haven't seen, we have 
a development room accepted last week at FOSDEM um, for open source and energy efficiency. So we'd like to invite you to, <laughs> you to talk about it to come and talk about this at FOSDEM next year. Okay. So that's my bit. Anyone else? I'm not very efficient. <laughs> okay, Debbie, thank you very much. Thank you.